All right. Welcome everybody to the first monthly office fun office hours for 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Um, this meeting, Cody Manuel is going to be giving a presentation from Cody about uh, using their tools on Wharf. So uh, excited to hear more about that and uh, see what they can do. Um, before that, a couple of things. Um, I'm starting to think about putting together a training session late March on parallel programming. My idea is to kind of take a simplified example program that's doing something like a 1D heat transfer calculation or something like that and, you know, show how it's done, you know, using traditional just serial code uh, and then transform that to do MPI or co-arrays and then also do a transformation that uses OpenMP or do concurrent. So kind of the mixture of, you know, doing multi-node parallel versus, you know, single node like thread level parallelism. Um, just kind of, you know, give give an introduction to the different ways of doing parallel programming in Fortran. Um, so if you've got thoughts, ideas, preferred dates, um, let me know. I'm going to start trying to put together a, a rubric or an outline of what that's what that might look like soon, and then I'll uh, get it on a calendar and let everybody know what the all the logistics are. Um, other than that, uh, I can announce that as of probably tomorrow, we should have Flang New available for testing on Perlmutter. Um, so you'll be able to do module load, prog env, LLVM, and then flang-new should be a Fortran compiler in your path, which is the, the LLVM Fortran compiler that's been in development with NVIDIA and others in the lead, which should be, uh, should be usable. So uh, I encourage anybody who can to give that a try on their code. I want to see what's it capable of right now. I know it's still kind of in a early beta phase. I think there might even still be a hidden flag you're supposed to pass if you want to use some of the modern features, but uh, be curious to see what anybody's experience is with it. Um, that is, I think, all that I have for now. Or Oh, I have one more thing. Uh, I'll show real quick. I did set up a fun group page on the NERSC website. So let me share real quick and I'll show you where that is. So if you're all familiar with uh, the NERSC website, uh, under the For Users tab, uh, there's a NERSC Users Group page. And if you go there on the left-hand side, there's a Fun Group page listed, and it's all the way at the bottom uh, of this list on the, on the Users Group page. And so that's a potentially easier place to remember and find for uh, the NERSC user Slack, the fun email list. If you want, want to subscribe to that, please do if you haven't. And uh, a quick link to the NERSC events calendar because uh, I post uh, the fun meetings and stuff on the NERSC events calendar. So hopefully that's easier for you guys to share around and, and remember how to find if you ever need it. All right. That is all that I had for now, and I will hand it over to Manuel, who is going to tell us about Cody. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Um, let me quickly check that I can share the screen correctly. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. OK, perfect. So on our side, um, Today, it will not be a, an announcement, but will be a kind of a pre-announcement of a new release of Kodi that will be available in late January. So here today, we are going to see a demonstrator of new capabilities that we have been implementing in the last three months that are intended essentially to help developers and team leaders to understand which are the uh, best practice recommendations for performance that on, on code quality and modernization of Fortran that Kodi can trigger and essentially create the confidence that following those rules 
the user, the developer can get better code or faster code. So you will see, and we will see what we are uh, delivering in this new version here. I can see Koichi raising his hand, so I'm not sure if we should give him. Oh, oh yeah, I, I was wondering if the, if is the screen shared, I don't see any screens or presentations on my Zoom uh, window. I'm seeing it. Yeah? How about the other participants? I do not see. Okay. That's Oh, well, that's weird. There's a new setting, apparently. So shared oh. screens can be seen by, and it was set to me only. Interesting. <laughs> but now, now, now I see it. Thank you. By the host. <laughs> Excellent. All right, can you see it now? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Cool. Sorry. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Koichi. Okay, so um, today here we are three people on the Kodi side. So uh, Ulysses is typically the person from our team that helps with the training course that we do uh, at NERS. And also whenever someone at NERS uses Kodi, he's, let's say, the first front line, front line to reply to any messages, questions about the usability of Kodi. So Ulysses is here and also for the first time, Alvaro is also with us. Alvaro is the person that has been working harder on the WORF project because we are working also on more Fortran projects because we are strongly interested in rising the level of Fortran support and matureness up to the level of C that we have today in C++. So Alvaro has been, is the person that will be doing the demonstration of the capabilities you will see uh, in a short demo that around five to 10 minutes. So uh, very quickly, um, what is Kodi? Kodi essentially is brings to performance a new approach, approach that has been very successfully applied in the scope of software development for security or for compliance with regulations in automotive market. So whenever we drive our cars or we operate the trains or the planes, all the software embedded there needs to be compliant with coding standards that have been created, curated and, and automated for more than two decades. So all that expertise, the way to of work, the way the tools are designed, and even the way the catalog is organized, we are mimicking all of that and bringing that same approach to HPC and performance for the first time. Okay, so the, from the usability perspective, it's yet another static code analyzer, but in order to address performance, there is a very important difference with respect to any other static code analyzer. That is, static code analyzers typically focus on the code, look at the source code, and trigger recommendations based only on the source code. But we all know that this cannot work for performance. For performance, you need to go beyond that, and you need to provide and trigger recommendations found in the code, but that, are, that make sense in the context of the hardware you are targeting, CPU, GPU, to simplify it, compiler and compiler versions, Worf is one package that is, I think, prevailed for more than five or six or seven compilers across different compiler versions. So there is a whole variety of options that you can choose. And all of them, and even the operating system, the pre-installed system libraries, all of this has an impact on the final performance that we see as users. Okay. So seeing and translating what Kodi triggers or provides as recommendations into actual performance gain is something that is beyond the code is beyond for the capabilities of a tool like Kodi. So this is why Kodi provides features to integrate and interoperate with the build system, with the compiler, and with the hardware, okay? And this is a key difference with respect to any other static code analyzer not addressing performance. But from the point of view of usability, it's yet another static code analyzer. You will see that it's very simple to use. We provide a command line interface that you can call from the terminal, or you, you can invoke from your preferred ID, or you can even invoke it from the scripts running on your DevOps or CI/CD continuous integration framework. So in the end, the command line interface is designed in the same way that professional tools for secure coding, similar ways or functionality and options in the command line. So overall, what is the, 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 the scope of Kodi? We support C, Fortran, and C++ in this order of maturity, okay? And Fortran kept catching up very quickly with 
very, very mature support of, that we have for C. For C++, we are constantly in, const in contact with uh, people developing C++ in HPC, try to understand which is the subset features of C++, which is a huge, it's a monster, it's very, very big, might be supported in order for could it to start to be, let's say, usable in practice in the scope of C++ abstract generic program, okay? But let's say to, to make it uh, clear here, C is very mature, Fortran catching up very, very quickly. And here we are talking about Fortran. So Fortran is around more than 70% of our development resources today in the Kodi team. So uh, a strong bet on our side, okay? During the last more than six months. So overall, remember that compilers don't provide big performance. It's a lot of work that, that developers need to do in setting up the package, using the compiler flags properly, using the language constructs properly. And in the end, what we want is to provide faster code, but don't expect compilers to provide you with a big performance. So what does Kodi help? Kodi helps you, it's a, it's a guidance to help you to write more compiler-friendly, hardware-friendly code. So that ideally just changing the code, the source code and decorating it with key constructs or flags or pragmas or um, additional information to the compiler, the compiler can do a much better job. We try to avoid implementing and automating rules that favor Ninja coding, because Ninja code can be maintained by the developer that coded it. But two years later, new developers come in and, okay, where do I begin to touch this code? What is this code doing? Okay. So all the rules documented and curated in the catalog of Kodi, which is now more than 70 rules for C, and more than almost 50 rules for Fortran and growing up, growing very, very fast. All these rules are intended to provide you an improvement in performance, but keeping in mind, we want to favor maintainability of the code and readability of the code, which we believe is important in the medium long term for the organizations. Okay, and just as an example, in HPC on Intel website, you can see a blog post of Kodi being complementary to all the comprehensive set of Intel tools. So Intel tools don't provide the same capabilities you will see here. So Kodi is complementary and at the same time needs to interoperate with the different tools. And the same states for other environments like Cray programming environment, GNU programming environment, and other, other than that. So overall, you can see for simple kernels, performance improvements of up to 18, 18x or 20x using on the latest uh, Intel hardware, okay? So this is just an example to create confidence of the final impact of Kodi on performance, but getting to this performance can be simple or straightforward in simple kernels, but large code bases, you cannot do this typically in one step. You need an iterative process that is but we're way complicated, okay? So having, having all of this in mind, Kodi, you can use it at the coding stage or at the testing stage. Regarding Wolf, what we'll be seeing next is a very good example of larger scale HPC simulations. So typically codes that are developed for decades, ported to many systems over time, developed by tens or hundreds of developers, many can be even retired, so miss new people needs to come in to maintain and improve a large number of components that are, are part of the package, okay? So this is a work, but there are many, many HPC packages out there that are suffer from the same, the same problems or issues over time. So where Kodi will help you? Kodi will not help you to produce distributed code. Will not help you to, to improve communications, let's say MPI communications, across different jobs operating or running on different nodes of a supercomputer like Permuter. But you can use Kodi to take one of these jobs running on a, on a, on a node and use Kodi to optimize, inter, do internode optimizations. Vectorization, memory efficiency, multi-threading on the CPU side, offloading to GPU, all, all of this, a combination of this inside the, the node of a typical supercomputer, okay? Uh, okay, so coming to the end in terms of slides, these are just very, very high level features, but let me skip this. Today we are presenting kind of an advance of the new release. 
that essentially will focus not on new uh, fancy recommendations or detection of more complex codes, because one of the main barriers we detected in the last term of last year was user experience and reproducibility and create the confidence on the developer that if Codiri products are recommendation, if they invest two hours, eight hours in taking a look at it and trying to implement it, there is, let's say, high chances that the next version of the code is better in terms of quality and potential uh, is a, a, a good step towards improving the performance of the code. Okay, so this is what we mean by reproducibility of the performance impacts that we see on our lab when we decide to document and develop a new checker. So what you will see in the demo, the screening report that was available in January last year, but we have added a ranking where the ranking now, instead of seeing just the plain list of recommendations, now they are ordered. So on the top of the ranking are those ones that we think from our experience that we provide you more, um, more likely we provide you a better code and faster code. Uh, the ranking also is built using, um, it's not subjective, let's say, why a, a rule is ranked higher than another one, but we do it based on three criteria that we call likelihood, remediation cost, and severity. This is not this is new here, but it's not new, for instance, in the scope of, of secure coding. Secure coding has been this here for more than two decades. If you click on one of these rules, you see that in each rule, is apart from all the documentation that you see in the catalog of Kodi, you can see that they include what they call a risk assessment summary, which provides you level one, level two, level three, kind of grouping the recommendations in levels. Level one is where you should put your attention first, level two next, and level three at the end, okay? And within each level, you can see each rule with a priority. It's a number. And this number, higher number, means put within level one, put your attention on P27, not on P10, okay? And the remediation cost, the likelihood and the severity, the remediation cost is, let's say, an indication of how much development effort it will take you to implement one of these rules, okay? The likelihood is the potential that if you implement it, you will get faster code. And the severity is definitely something that according to best practices, you should definitely look or not look at in terms of performance or modernization, okay? So we have, let's say, annotated that all of the 70 rules of Kodi with this severity, likelihood, and remediation cost in the scope of performance. And based on this, we compute the priority and the level. And this information is used to elaborate the ranking that you will see next for Wolf. So going back here, um, if later someone is curious or wants to know more, we have some backup slides with examples of rules to understand this, how we have adapted this likelihood, remediation, cost, and severity from secure coding to performance coding, okay? So we can discuss this later in more detail if needed. But for now, let me skip it. I prefer to focus on the reproducibility side because all of the best practice rules that we have here, and even the, um, let me click on one of them, for instance, recommendation 39 for loop interchange, all this information, examples, and external references to dig deeper into what this rule is about, we are migrating all of this catalog to GitHub repository. Why? Because we want, we see that this format is not good for engagement with the developer community of developers. Developers need to find all of this information in GitHub and a control version to provide comments, feedback, even suggest drafts of new rules. So that we need, we are going to set up a process of rules that are publicly available and kind of a pipeline of new rules of ideas that we have or that the community suggests that we believe can be automated so that we can start engaging with the community both for reviewing existing rules and provide additional feedback based on the experience but also start to draft and think of automating new rules that can be guided by the, what really the community believes is more useful for in this case for Fortran uh, coding. Okay, so 
Um, the GitHub repository, I think I don't have. Yes, I have a, this is an internal draft, so not public yet, but it will look some, something like this. You will see a listing of all the rules, whether which are the languages where they are available, and it's within the, each of the rules, you will see exactly the same information that you can see in the, in the current website, but also additionally examples of codes that we use internally to test that they, that are very simple examples that are representative of a rule that should be triggered. What are we doing also? We are adapting these examples so that if we can find a very simple example with a minimum amount of computation, we can use one example to trigger the recommendation so that the user can understand what is it about with a simple code. But also we want to, we intend to provide some rules, let me, some additional information. I think 39 should be here. Well, this has not been yet migrated, but what, we, what you will find here is for this simple code where loop interchange can be applied, a sequence of four or five commands using code to produce the non-optimized, the optimized, so that you can just have to copy and paste the commands and reproduce our performance numbers on your own system, on your own laptop, okay? So with all of this that has been discussed internally in the team and with customers and partners and people collaborating with us, we expect this to really help us engage further and collaborate more deeply with the community of developers, in particular with Fortran community, through Fortran Flang, Fortran Users Group, different communities related to different aspects of Fortran, okay? And we believe this is important. This is the third, let's say, pillar of this announcement, because this way you don't have to believe that Rule 39 brings 3x faster code. We, we, do, we do it on our lab, but you can reproduce it. And you have all the resources available in the GitHub to reproduce it by yourself, okay? Um, okay, so um, for the sake of time, I would suggest, Brad, that I continue to present, uh, let's say, the, the learnings or the results from WORF. Then uh, Alvaro can do a short demo, and then we use the demo time to start answering questions or let's say, talk about this and uh, share thoughts among the attendees. Make sense? Yeah, that sounds good. Perfect. So, okay, this is the, let me scroll up. Okay. There is a lot of work by Alvaro. So thank you Alvaro for all of this hard work. We have tried to summarize all of our findings in just, let's say, two, three uh, pieces of information. Just to point out, three, three weeks ago, we had never seen WORF source code. Zero experience on our side on the WORF source code, organization, build, blah, blah, blah. So it's very important for us to engage with the NERSC people working on WORF and even with the WORF community. Thank you, Koichi, also for facilitating all of that through your great feedback and conversation. So what you see here is that we have created a Docker container that internally has, we have selected the GNU compiler setup in a uh, build in, in, in WORF. The only reason is that we are more familiar with it. But of course, all of this can be reproduced with any of the builds supported by the WORF package, okay? So uh, all the runnings that we are doing is using uh, work, and we tested, let's say, the two extremes. On one side, the harder MPI plus OpenMP setup. This is the setup 35 in, in the in the WORF build. And we have also, we have found, learn a lot here, but we have found some issues with the way the code is implemented, in particular, some of the hot spots that are of interest contain MPI code in the middle of the code. So this is more challenging, and uh, let's say, it's, it's low it's a low hanging fruit to work on the serial version because the part of the hotspot as you will see next is essentially the same. But the MPI code just adds some message passing, essentially an, an MPI or reduce in the middle of the hotspot. So or, or everything we find and learn on the serial version, we will be able to also uh, put it in value in the MPI plus OpenMP simulation. So let's keep it simple to start with a new code you, you have never seen before. 
Okay. So with all of this, we have been running WORF latest version 4.5.1 and this WORF ARBW solver. Okay. With real data downloaded from the website following uh, coaching recommendations. For this summary, so uh, almost 500 files, more than seven, seven, uh, 700,000 lines of code, total analysis eight hours, in this case, to report more than 17,000 uh, checkers active in coding. Okay? From this, the split is 16,000 related to quality and 700 related to performance. Okay, so all of these numbers, you can get them from the, and all of this, just with 100 failures that we have identified the reason. And it's something related to FLANG. It's good news that you announced that the new FLANG compiler will be available in Permuter because the same the front-end technology, so a compiler perspective, a lecture and parser of Fortran is the same technology that we are using internally in Kodi. Okay, then in the middle end, the Fortran FLANG new uses a standard LVM technology, and we use Kodi technology, completely separate capabilities. But the front end is exactly the same technology. Indeed, we are very interested in, in engaging with the FLANG developers because we are finding bugs or issues related not to Kodi, but to the integration of FLANG front end in Kodi. So we can provide a lot of feedback to increase the robustness and favor the testing of the FLAN front end and uh, also for uh, as a result of the FLAN new compiler. Okay. So all of these numbers are obtained with a command like this, where you see that we are activating the screening, as we said, showing the ranking. We are asking Kodi to show progress. So file by file, function by function, you see in the screen that it's something going on. You don't have the, the the terminal is stored for one hour. Okay, it's important for to create confidence that something is making progress and the, the, the system is not stored. Include tags. This is to activate all of the checkers of Kodi. And these are some files that don't fail. Kodi can analyze them, but we have seen that they take a huge amount of analysis time, and we are still diagnosing if it is because of Kodi implementation. FLANG front end implementation or the interoperability between the two of them. Okay. But they don't fail. It's just very long execution time by Kodi. And it doesn't bring anything relevant or important at this stage of the work. Okay. So executing this command, you see something like this. So summary of files, the 17,000 checks on the 700 lines of code, and the 17,000 checks split in different types of performance optimization programs. So a scalar control memory and vector are for single threaded or single core optimizations. By default, multi-threading recommendations are disabled because for instance, we are helping developers developing software for microcontrollers. Microcontrollers, they don't use multi-threading using OpenMP. It's the, the, the multi-threading is solved with using different approach, POSIX threads or whatever. Okay, so multi-threading and offloading are disabled by default. And with include tax all for HPC is relevant, we activate also these checkers, offloading to GPUs and multi-threading on the CPU side. Okay, so so far this this is the, the type of analysis we've seen in the last Kodi training course back in April. And this is the new ranking, where we can see all the 7,000, 17,000 organized by priority according to the level one, level two, and level three, and the priority within the level, and also occurrences, number of times a given remark or recommendation was triggered. So with all of this information, you as a developer, you see you can decide, I want to start trying to address, I don't know, uh, vectorization issues uh, that can be favored through loop fission. And you focus on rules 21 and rule 60. Okay, so this provides you a very high level overview to, to help you, where should I start to address 17,000 checkers that you can not expect to afford them one by one, okay, or implement them one by one. Okay, uh, to finish my part, um, we have made a profiling of WORF 
using Perl. So we can see the typical in the frame graph, the typical HPC application. So one single routine with a time step simulation loop that goes across all the runtime. And within each iteration, you can see kind of four parts. These are the four typical steps of one single time step loop iteration. It is not the more time consuming, but it is the one that we consider relevant for this part that is focusing on the Thompson uh, hotspot. Only, only takes 4% of the runtime, but it was relevant because we were trying to focus on one problem that has scientific uh, interest. And also we can use a uh, Cody to try to see how we can help to optimize the performance of this new model, okay? Okay, and this is more detailed. So I will not go through this. I will hand it over to Alvaro, who will run some of the commands to see the ranking and the and the output of Kodi going live for one of these real uh, codes, the hotspot uh, MC, uh, Thompson. So, Alvaro, are you ready to share your screen? Yes, let me try to share the screen. So, are you able to see it? I see it. Is everybody else able to see it? Yes, so. uh, yes, I, I see it. Okay, great. So, as Manuel said, we try to focus analysis on the Thompson module. So, let's try to run now the screening report of Cody. Let me put the command here. Uh, I think that I can just copy paste it and it will be faster. So I'm going to let Cody run the analysis and the, this, all the entries were already explained by Manuel. This is the screening report. This enables the ordering of the different recommendations by a priority level. This enables all possible recommendations from Cody. And this is the module that we are currently analyzing. And the show progress functions will allow us to see how Cody analyzes in real time the different functions that are present in this source file. So this analysis will take about five minutes, so we need to wait a bit, but we can also use this time to uh, review any questions if you have some. Oh yeah, can I ask a quick, I don't know, quick question, but questions to the for the last slide that the manual was sharing that uh, regarding at the uh, hotspots, like for you, uh, you guys are showing four processes that taking up some time during that one time step or something. Like a uh, Thompson scheme, you know, occupies for like 4% and some other part 45% and those results. I was just curious how you get those estimates by running WOLF uh, executable as a simulation or is it something as a like offline driver, I don't know, kind of, I don't know. How, how did you get those numbers? So we basically added in the compilation of WOLF uh, the back symbols to all the source files mm -hmm. and just by running perf on top of uh, WOLF, a WOLF real simulation it is able to record that data and generate the flame graph. Does this answer your question? Uh, yeah, so you did run the wolf as as usual, I guess. And then, yeah, you, yeah. Made, then you made some information to be written so that you can get those time spent on each process. Is that correct? Yeah, this information is collected by the perf command line tool, which yeah. is available oh, in Linux systems. So okay. Perf, okay. Perf uses a polling based sampling, right? Yes. Yeah. So it samples it's like, like, a, every, like every, a... so, every so many microseconds, it says, hey, yeah. what does the call stack look like right now? And based on all of the samples, it can determine, you know, where am I spending a lot of time? Oh, okay. Thank you. In contrast to, for instance, GProf, 
that instruments are executable, as far as I know. It, it just adds kind of a init finish uh, record whenever a new function is invoked and records the time spent and finally provides you the accumulation. So it's a different, let's say, technology for profiling. Perf uses sampling, quality prof uses in, in, uh, um, instrumentation. What we have done, not with Word, but with other Fortran project, a big one we are using that is called Open Radios, we run the profiling with both Perf and Giprof. And let's say that the estimation of the hotspots and the amount of time invested with the two profilers was roughly the same for Open Radios. So that's the reason why we didn't, let's say, double check that the perf results are also obtained with another technology for profiling. We are assuming that it will be reliable and confident. Indeed, the Cray tools available in Permuter, I attended the course about the Cray tools uh, last month. Cray tools provide an integration with perf. So essentially they're using the same profiling when you use the great tools according to uh, following the the instructions uh, of of great uh, tools. Yeah, I see. Uh, can I ask one more question um, about the certain modules that are uh, excluded from the the this particular example or previous example because the code is taking too long and uh, I I. Two of the subroutines excluded that I'm kind of familiar with, or I had to look at. One is related to the file in uh, I/O. The other is uh, one of the corresponding physical processes made by wall, representing the processes in the over the land, like what the trees do, what the grass do, what the soil, you know, water is moving in the soil. That's uh, uh, very well known to be very complex and uh, um, not necessarily well written. And I'm just curious, the, the other IO part was very difficult for me to read because there's no, essentially no comment. And I was not too familiar with Fortran, but for your Cody case, what makes Cody to spend so long time? Like uh, not just because it has so many problems? Um. We, we are trying to, we are digging deeper into that, but essentially okay. one of the problems with this project, with this hotspot is that um, when you look at codes, uh, typically the hotspot is relatively small. Let's say it is 200, 300, 500 lines of code, and this consumes 40% of the time. In this case, we have one code with two with 2,500 lines of code, so almost 3,000 lines of code that need to be analyzed in memory in one single, let's say, pass to pinpoint all the, or trigger all the opportunities or checkers of code. So the oh. very, very large code or hotspots, which is not so usual, but it is the case in Word, this can increase the amount of memory and computation time that is needed by Kodi, by Kodi, by the compiler, or by any other static analyzer. Okay, and then oh. also most of our checkers, um, we have two types of checkers. So some of the checkers, let's say, all of them are found in one pass over the code, while others require one single pass over the code per check. Okay, so depending on the checkers activated and actually run, the analysis time can be very very fast or can go. A bit. We have to say that we didn't expect uh, five minutes or eight hours for this analysis to last. So probably part of this uh, runtime will be reduced once we have a more and more mature implementation of the of good for support. Okay, that's our expectation as of today. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay but... Next. Any other questions? Yeah, the... oh, no, please proceed. Yeah, Go if on. there are no more questions, so we can see here that Kodi analyzed about uh, 4,500 lines of code in about five minutes. 
and identified uh, 39 possible recommendations, which are mainly focused on quality of the code. Uh, these recommendations are sorted in this table right here using the priority level that Manuel explained earlier. And we can also see the description of these recommendations. For instance, there are multiple uh, recommendations about avoiding global variables, about avoiding legacy Fortran constructs. And this will be the usual first output that a user would generate using Kodi to optimize the code. OK, but we can also see that there are no recommendations related to performance. And that seems strange because it's a performance-driven system worth. And we try to dig uh, down on why is this happening. And we found that we mainly need to improve uh, the maturity of the Fortran support, as Manuel has said earlier. So that's why what, what we need to focus on from now on. Uh, do you want me to do the second demo, Manuel? Or... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, what is the best practice recommendation that we say? OK, if the screening, you found 700 opportunities for performance optimization, work on them. But what happens if you find zero? Is it because Kodi doesn't have any, any recommendation for the code? Or is there any feature in the code for Tron construct that we are not properly supporting? Okay, so these two things can happen. So the next step to, we typically do internally and we recommend to users is to do a loop level analysis. So instead of reporting the checkers for um, the function that is the hotspot, let's try to see what is happening for each of the loops of the hotspot function. Okay, and for this we have the tool PW loops. This is the invocation um, we are running here. Are you running it? You should run it only for the module and Thompson, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, I, I put, oh, sorry, code. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Totally right. Uh, OK. Thanks so, for, pointing, uh, for, for pointing it out. <laughs> So initially, the output is the same. It's just about what code is finding in the command line. And now you will see the hierarchy of all of the loops that appear in the code, or more than 190 loops in the, in, the, in the hotspot file. And what you will be seeing here is, essentially, in this analysis, you will find uh, Kodi behind the scenes is invoking Kodi technology, but also is invoking the the G4 Tron compiler. So you will see a, a table reporting what the G4 Tron compiler is doing in the maximum optimization level for each loop, okay? Which is interesting because in the end, if you go to the loop level analysis, you want to try best step, they say, it's more productive for you to focus on what the compiler missed instead of trying to do with Kodi what the compiler has already done, okay? So we have analysis capabilities in that direction. You can see here the result, scroll up. Yeah. Yeah, that mm, there are plenty of entries. The, these are all the loops that are present in the Thompson file. OK. And in the column, Gfortran 12, is essentially Kodi has invoked uh, GCC. It has produced the optimization report and the messages. And Kodi has analyzed those messages and summarized all the information here, saying, for instance, that some loops have been automatically vectorized by Gfortran while others have not been vectorized. And the reason, because of complex control flow, it is outer loop and, and g doesn't have outer loop vectorization capabilities. There is a variety of reasons that Kodi can identify. If you scroll down, please. Yeah, it's in, right here. In the legend below, you can see the current reasons that Kodi can identify. So this is almost in constantly being improved, trying to support new resources to provide more comprehensive reports of what the compiler did. And this is a level of integration that is, let's say, the highest level of integration that we have with compilers. Not only supporting compiler-specific flags, but also invoking the compiler, producing the optimization report, parsing the report, and interpreting the report to, let's say, digest all the information for the user. So 
this is where we are at this moment. So you can, we can see that the next step is identifying why Cody is reporting no for all the loops. And we have already identified one of the reasons that is, there is a very simple code that Cody is supporting, but for some reason there is a construct in the Worf implementation that Cody cannot properly handle today. Once this is solved, probably Cody will be analyzing properly more than 100 loops of all of these 200 loops. So this is the, the way we work to try to, let's say, influence in our roadmap, trying to prioritize where we put the effort so that it has, we can maximize the impact on codes that are uh, being developed or optimized by our users or by the community, and try to establish this innovation cycle and conversation, providing feedback to the community, a flank, for instance, and receiving feedback from the community, directly about the tool, and also using the catalog as a way of motivating specific information, specific discussions about the rule, new rules that can be automated, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is where we are today. We have, we are about to finish this part of the analysis, implement some bug fixes to improve for transport, and we expect around 100 of these loops to be properly analyzed by Cody. And at that point, we will be able to start adding pragmas using PW Directives Cody tool that we have explained deeply in the NERS course back in April. So we are about to start to see pragmas annotated in the code with with Cody. Overall, a huge, very, very useful information, very really useful work to quickly improve the current support for Fortran. So both for modernization or legacy code and also for performance rules. So very, very interesting cooperation. So Brad, I don't know, uh, we have probably gone a bit over the time that we have planned. Hopefully yeah. it has been interesting. That's okay. This has been very, very interesting. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have, I have a question. Is this essentially optimizing for specific computers or is it more general in terms of best practices for Fortran? Because it looks like a lot of the recommendations are popping up in the current version, general best practices that a good coder knows about. Um, but some of the things we have more trouble with is optimizing for Perlmutter versus a machine that's using a different CPU at IBM or something like that. Okay, very good question. So if you remember, we, as a young company, we need to put focus where we see maximum value, right? So we have started automating rules that no other tool has been has automated so far related to performance optimization for different types of problems, as you have seen in the screening, from single core, multi-threading of loading, and now quality, and trying to lead, be somehow agnostic of low-level hardware features. When I say low-level hardware features is that you can use Kodi and, and ask Kodi, give me everything you have for my controller units, for CPUs, for GPUs, and it will do it. Now we are starting to design and draft new rules that are starting to cross the line from high level hardware to low level hardware descriptions. A very good example is, for instance, uh, extract or derive types um, pack and align. You cannot do implement pack and alignment of an structure to reduce the amount of data used by the binary and even to make more data fit into the cache line without knowing the cache line. Okay, so we are starting with uh, optimizations for memory efficiency, in particular focusing on cache efficiency and considering cache line. So loop interchange is one technique that considers cache line, but you can implement it without even being aware of the cache line size. But for a struct, when you go to, from let's say data structures that are plain arrays to arrays of structs, structs of arrays, something involving derived types, then you need to start to strongly consider at least the cache line or the cache size. So this is what we are today. We have drafted three, four new rules related to array of structs and structs of arrays and suggesting how to refactor the code to make it run faster. Pack and align, reordering, grouping the fields that are hot in a given loop, or even splitting a structure in the hot subset and the not hot subset. Techniques that are widely used, but 
implementing them and deciding to implement them depends on considering low-level hardware parameters. So we are starting to cross that line and go into implementing automating this kind of rules. I hope this answers your question. Bill. Yeah, that helps a bit. Thanks. Yeah, in terms of motivation too, just thinking off the top of my head here, like, like for those of us that work with war, bang for the buck, going to Perlmutter really changed how we have to approach running the model. Um, because we used to be able to just run MPI on every core. And now if you're running a large model domain, you can't do that anymore because the IO bottlenecks where you've got a hundred writers trying to output at the same time. So it, finding ways to incorporate IO tracking and load balancing across nodes and things would also be very useful, but that might be coding beyond what Cody designed for, I don't know. Okay. That's definitely, definitely very, very interesting. Cody, let's say, is focusing all the recommendations we have automated today, focus on compute intensive loops that are computation only. So whenever we find a loop with IO, it's a sufficient reason to say, Cody will not report anything. Because if you think of vectorization, you cannot do efficient vectorization with IO, okay? Yeah. But it is true, when you go up to distributed computing, we can start to think of recognizing patterns of loops that include MPI send, MPI receive, that include some kind of IO. You know, we can think of patterns of loops that are responsible for communications or IO that could be detected through static analysis just to help you to focus on loops that fulfill several properties. But of course, we need to cooperate with the community to understand which patterns might be interesting. And of course, and very important, what would be the action suggested to the user? We can automate it, we can find it, but what should we recommend? So you you in the community, you have huge experience in those type of things. So working closely with these teams and with you, I think I'm being very, very fruitful in identifying a subset of force rules that we could document and eventually automate in Cody related to IO and communication. I hope this explanation makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? All right, seeing none at the moment. Uh, thank you, Manuel and Alvaro, for that uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, looking forward to hearing more as you guys continue to make progress on Fortran support and hearing how the wharf team does applying the code so um i will go ahead and stop recording for now